Seward. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. I also rise to take note of the Closing the Gap statement. Um, I note once again that this report was not tabled on the first day of Parliament, as was originally promised. And I'm, while I'm pleased that the report is being, uh, has been uh, tabled and has been issued, I think it, by failing to table it on the first day that Parliament sits every year, what we're doing is, is failing to really mark that important date and saying we are totally committed to closing the gap. We've missed that date every single time. So we've missed that opportunity to say we are putting everything into closing the gap. I, um, like Senator Scullion, was on the trip to the Northern Territory last week um, as part of the inquiry into stronger futures legislation. And I know that we will have um, some time to debate that legislation in this place in the coming weeks. Far too soon, I might add, because it's obviously a piece of legis or a series of bills um, that make up a piece of legislation that has very, very many significant holes in it, which have become apparent already. One of the key things that, that obviously was highlighted in the trip to the Northern Territory, along with those appalling statistics that, I'll also, that Senator Scullion just referred to, that I'll refer to in a minute, was that overwhelming rejection of the intervention, overwhelming rejection of the stronger futures process as, and, and very clear understanding that it was phase two of the intervention, overwhelming condemnation of the lack of adequate consultation throughout the process of the intervention, but also in the development of the stronger futures legislation. Almost to a person, there was uh, one uh, gentleman who did think the consultation was um, okay, um, but almost to a person, the, con the consultation process was condemned. In other words, once again, this government is taking a top-down paternalistic approach of we know what's best for you and selectively listening. Last week highlighted very starkly the fact that the intervention just has not delivered. And while the Closing the Gap report does highlight some improvements, how can we not acknowledge um, that it's a good thing that infant mortality rates have improved? But the gap is still enormous in many, many areas, and it just has not been dealt with by the intervention. We are still seeing very significant problems with alcohol. And while some people will say, oh, alcohol's improved, if you talk to the uh, on one occasion, ladies came up to me and said, although some of the men think alcohol has improved, it hasn't. We, are still, we still have very, uh, very, very significant problems. Same is um, evident in other areas. And while the Northern Territory government is, um, thinks that some of the, um, the legislation that they have put in place most recently, or the, to, uh, the middle of last year, that started dealing with some of the in, uh, tightening up some of the alcohol controls, and they they are going to be supplying us with some statistics to look at what they think is some decrease in hospitalisation um, related to uh, violent instances related to alcohol. We are still seeing enormous trauma caused by alcohol. In other words, the approach that the government has taken has failed to work. Income management has failed to work. The, the uh, top down, this top-down punitive approach, unless you engage with communities, doesn't work. The education system, the, the issue of education, which is again it's highlighted in the, in the uh, Closing the Gap report, overemphasis on NAPLAN reports. But the, but the sorts of statistics that Senator Scullin was just referring to about the need for special assistance for the, for the young uh, children as they go into school, or children as they go into school. 60 per cent of the children in, the, in those, protect, those prescribed areas need some sort of special assistance. But they're not getting it. I have, I have lost count of the number of times I have stood in this chamber and for just one of the issues that, people need, that children need special assistance for, for hearing, for literacy and numeracy programs. Those sorts of programs are absolutely essential. Unless we start dealing with those programs, I and people coming after me are going to be marking this day saying we still haven't closed the gap. Until we actually start putting resources into those critical areas, is when we are, that's when we're going to see the gap starting to close. When we're actually being able to get and develop a positive relationship between children and school so that children realise there's a meaningful reason to go to school. That is, you can get educational outcomes. That is, there may be job prospects at the end of that process. We still don't have 
jobs being generated in the Northern Territory for people that have been promised and promised and promised. They haven't delivered. Now the, the, we, we keep seeing short-term decision making. CDEP, which the Howard government announced it was getting rid of and started getting rid of, the Labor government came in, they put it back for a while, they took it away again, and guess what? They've put it back again. They've realised that getting rid of CDP this July is a massive policy blunder and they've frozen it temporarily. Or they've put a freeze on the transition to finally, to finally kill off CDEP. And what have they done? Indefinite. So once again, we have this indefinite pro policy process going on the NT around um, employment that no one knows when, it's going to, when the next step is going to be taken in this flawed policy approach. Again, with stronger futures, we've got a series of more flawed approaches. Let's extend the SEEN program. Let's penalise parents if they don't send their kids to school. Let's alienate those parents from the education system when all the science, all the research shows that what we need to be doing is engaging parents with an education system, with the education system, letting them or encouraging participation in developing those, um, in developing school programs, to ensuring that we can have bilingual education, to ensuring that we have culturally appropriate education where parents get a say, where, where students actually get something meaningful out of the experience and having their, their special assistance requirements met. I can't say to you how many people have expressed the desire to want to engage with school, to want to engage in a better education for their kids and seeing something um, meaningful, which, is, which, when you go back to closing the gap report, what we get there is a whole lot of we've done this, we've done that, we've done this, and we're getting slightly better uh, results out of, uh, out of NAPLAN, but we can't clearly demonstrate that we are getting satisfactory educational outcomes from sending our kids to school. The process is let's get the kids into school and, and the education will take care of itself. Well, it doesn't do that. What makes a good education? Engagement with the parents, with the schools, with a curriculum that's culturally appropriate and that actually meets children's needs. Student-teacher ratio, absolutely critical, making sure we have that balance. Having quality teachers and quality, quality headmasters, head, uh, principals. Those are the keys uh, for delivering good educational outcomes, and we are just not seeing that. The government has tabled this closing the gap report. They have tabled this stronger um, futures legislation. No mention of additional resources. So one of the other key things we heard when we were in the Northern Territory last week is the one of the good things that has come out of the intervention, there's a couple, police and community, everyone acknowledges is a better thing. Resources have been absolutely critical. Putting resources into primary health has been absolutely essential. Putting resources into helping particularly community organisations address justice issues, because one of the other benefits, and I say that in inverted commas, of the intervention has been the skyrocketing incarceration rate of Aboriginal people in the Northern Territory. That's a great outcome, isn't it? Not. Um, but one of the, one of the benefits from the intervention, fortunately, has also been putting resources into addressing um, justice issues and, and enabling Aboriginal people to get access to um, community justice services. Those, that funding runs out in June. The government has made no commitment of resources. We don't know if those very critical health services are going to continue. We don't know if those critical justice services are going to continue. The government's announced an expansion of the income management process, both in the NT and, and in the other states. We don't know if there's more resources there to cope with that. And with the same program, the government said that they'll commit some social workers, but we have no idea if that very that change, very substantial change in education in the Northern Territory is actually going to get additional funding from the federal government. This place, in a couple of weeks, will be asked to vote on legislation that goes for 10 years, that, is a, that is, then expands the intervention. It will have been in place for 15 years. We're being asked to vote on that legislation. We don't know if there's going to be any money to implement it. We don't know how much more money is going to be invested in closing the gap. And the shadow report that the Aboriginal organisations tabled on the day of the closing the gap report highlights that as a critical need, highlights the absolute essential need for the government to commit to resources to all those health programs that are about to run out in June.
It is essential, if we're going to close the gap, that we no longer have this stop-start process of funding programs and of people Order, being Senator on short funding Seward, cycles. Your time has expired.